Christine, what is uh, therapeutic writing? Therapeutic writing is now called equine assistive activities because there are so many forms. Um, therapeutic writing is teaching writing skill. And then you have hippotherapy that is performed with a actual licensed therapist. And then mm-hmm. you have on the ground activities, you could be driving or vaulting. So mm-hmm. we call it now TAF, um, Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship Association, mm-hmm. which has been in, um, established in 1969 and oversees the arena of therapeutic writing or equine assisted activities, which it's called now. Um, so, anyways, that. Um, we have a, um, a lady that's involved that has worked in the school system for many years, and she has a, de- a master's degree in psychology and is, able, is licensed to do group counseling. Um, mm-hmm. So if there's issues that these children are bullying, um, you know, back in the day when we were being picked on or we were picking on others, this is a coping skill that you need to learn. But then there's true bullying that takes place. Um, mm-hmm. And learning how to just to rise above it. Um, Tracy, you said something to me the other day that has stuck with me, and I, I, I use it and reflect on it all the time. But the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. Yes. And recognizing what that means and, and then applying that to your daily life and accepting it for what it is. Hi, my name is Chris O'Connell, and I founded um, the ranch in 2001 as a nonprofit therapeutic writing center um, after a series of tragedies in my life. I'm a PATH certified instructor. I also am a certified brain injury specialist. Just this last uh, fall, we achieved our premier accreditation through PATH. That is the highest of standards. PATH has been, originally was NARA, North American Riding for the Handicap Association. And then they changed their name and it now is um, Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship. And that's an international program, organization. So by becoming a premier accredited center, We are now involved on an international level. So I feel very excited that, Teresa, you brought us in to this and um, doing this documentary. I think it's going to um, bring exposure to what veterans across the world have at their fingers. There's a program in California, I believe it is, or Arizona. I think it's Arizona. They call it Horses, the number four heroes. And they allow other organizations to become a part of their organization as long as they are within their guidelines. Um, So we are affiliated with that organization as well. Hello, I'm Ken Gordon. Uh, They call me Kenny G at the ranch, uh, sort of a tease on that. And I don't play the saxophone, but I was in the Navy for 15 years. Uh, I felt I did my time. I didn't feel at the time doing a 20. And I was working at a family shop. Uh, a wonderful lady named Sue Blugerman, who is a volunteer here on the board, she uh, knew I was a veteran. She said, hey, would you like to help out at Charity Hill Ranch with the horses? Uh, we're going to be starting, uh, hopefully, a Horses for Heroes program, and we could use uh, another veteran. I said, sure. One day a week, I started mucking out the stalls, uh, getting to know the horses, and I fell in love with this place. Now it's um, four to five days a week I come here, and it's just a great place. I was never diagnosed with anything, and maybe I had PTSD, I don't know, but I just know this place filled a big empty spot in me, and uh, it's a wonderful place. The the people here taking part in helping with the training for uh, other clients, being a sidewalker, I didn't realize so much work is involved. And it's, just, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of hard work, and I've learned so much. And uh, I love these horses, 
And, and I, one in particular I fell in love with was Whistler, who was a Tennessee walking horse. I didn't see that coming. And, <laughs> but, uh, and yeah, they do goofy stuff like uh, Comanche just did. But uh, the hard work is great. It's hard work. And everybody, you know, pulls through. But it's enjoyable. And it gives you a sense of fulfillment when you're, when you're finished and you look at, wow, look what I just did. And what I'm, I'm part of, you're part of something bigger than yourself. And I think that's what the military, when I, why a lot of people join, you want to be about part of something that's bigger than you. You're serving your whole country and your communities and making the sacrifices, and it just feels good to do it. And I, that's, it feels good. That's what I, I love about here. It feels good to do it. I guess that's the best thing to say about Charity Hill Ranch and what this program does is at the end of the day, you see what you've done and what you're a part of and you're helping all these other people that need your help and you can be proud of that, that you didn't do it just alone, you did it with a lot of other people alongside you, and, but you make a difference in someone else's life. And there it is right there. Hello, my name is Wayne Campbell and I'm here at Charity Hill Ranch, and I've been involved with Charity Hill Ranch uh, well, for a little over a year now, and uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. And uh, I got involved with this because of, of the things that I saw and everything. It's only been since about 1960 that I've been able to talk about Vietnam because of some emotional issues that I brought back with me that I didn't really know how to address it at that time. And as, it's, it's sort of funny. When one veteran's talking to another veteran, they can say something and the other veteran will get it right off the bat. A civilian can be around and try as they may. It could be a spouse even. But if they haven't ever been in the service, they won't quite get what the veteran's trying to tell them, whether they've been in combat or whether they have it. And this organization here at Cherry Hill Ranch has got a program that works with veterans that have anything from PTSD, TBI, and just Basically, maybe they have emotional issues that they can't, uh, their social skills lacks. And so this organization here helps in that way. I'm a volunteer, uh, as, as rather as somebody that, that's trying to be, a, be their friend and trying to help them along and get them to come out of their shells and talk and what have you, what I can do. I think as a, as a Vietnam veteran, the country has seen how not to treat their veterans. Because when we came back home, we were told not to talk about it. And in fact, if you landed at the Oakland uh, base in California, they, they would bring school buses to get you out of there that had bars on it because demonstrators were violent. Well, in the years since then, things have turned around and now we welcome our, our veterans home from Iraq and Afghanistan and all over the world that's been in harm's way and give them a true hero's welcome as well as the Veterans Administration is finally stepping up to plate now and taking care of them too. The starting point for the program to, to begin with would be to get everybody together and to find out what their needs are. Chris would work with them, you know, privately at first to find out what their backgrounds are because there's certain things that can and cannot be discussed as far as their individual needs because of HIPAA. HIPAA. And so she finds out those things and then she gets with all of the volunteers, lets them know what the people's names are. We have a get together and then generally say like on a Saturday, we'll get everybody together they'll be down in the arena or if it's in the warmer weather why they have a very nice outdoor arena here and they get they get the horses and or they get the, the veterans involved with the horses because there's something unique about the horse in itself if you have somebody that states particularly has emotional issues a horse is a very large animal and you get something like that it's not like a little doggy little, little cat it's a big animal by, by any stretch of imagination and once you you get to, to know certain animals in here certain horses in here you build a you, you build a, uh, a relationship with them and it's to the point in time where you look forward to coming out there and it helps you open up by the same token if you have uh, say a physical problem uh, as I understand I'm certainly not a doctor or anything nor did I stay at the Holiday Inn Express last night either <laughs> but um, if, if if a person can't walk let's just say they have cert some sort of muscular problems or whatever and they're, and they're confined to a wheelchair or they're handicapped in some way in that, in that manner the natural movement of a horse's, their body as they walk, will cause the same muscles and the same joints in your legs and your hips to move just as though you were walking yourself. 
So it's sort of ironic that here is this horse walking along, it's actually causing muscles and, and joints to move that otherwise have been set doing nothing. And uh, as well as working with veterans, well, of course, they work with the private sector too, for, for uh, particularly in youth and things like that, and, and adults, you know, that have had uh, that have traumatic brain injury, things like that, accidents for the, that equestrian therapy, it would be beneficial to them. You know, it's proven over the years and years. I read a lot of this. I'm a, I'm a internet geek, you might say. And when I heard about this, and about equestrian therapy. I thought, to be quite, quite honest, and I, I think I've told Tris this, I first thought that the equestrian therapy thing was just like some sort of a cover for somebody who really had a passion on having horses but needed to reason how to, you know, to, to pull it up. Find out, no, equestrian therapy has been around for years and it is well, well recognized as a very therapeutic way to get you know, the, the correct exercises and things like this to help people. Unfortunately, VA doesn't financially recognize or doesn't they don't recognize it or financially support it in any way right now. So even though you got veterans coming here, they get no money at all from the Veterans Administration as far as a payment in kind for veteran services. You know, so anything we do, why the funds have to be donated, but now say from the private sector, why yes, then say like car insurances and things like that would be involved with it, you know, something like that. Where the, the, the result of the injury was a result of a bad car accident. You know, myself when I came out here, it just, it just bring, it, there's something about coming into this place, and it's hard to say this without getting emotional. I'm glad I got hurt beside me right now. When you come in here, you can't tell us so much in the wintertime, but in the summertime, it's warm and everything. As you drive in, there's a, it's kind of like flat, and then it comes up on a knoll, and then finally this whole place, you can see the stable, the arena, the house, homes. You feel like you're, you've come to a place of comfort. You've come home. And it's settling. It's, it's mentally settling. And so it's kind of like you, you just came through. It's just like hopping in the lake dirty and you come out clean. It's like you get to this wall and suddenly, I feel like I'm a place where people care. And it's just a setting. And, and when I got here, it reminded me of being back home on the farm with my mom and dad. Of course, they're deceased now. And so many of the things I see around here takes me back to my roots. And it's like the old thing, you can take the boy out of the country, but you aren't gonna take the country out of the boy. It's not gonna happen. And when I come out here to be around these horses, it brings all that back of being my horse, we didn't use him as far, I rode him. I rode him and, and my dad had a, a buggy that we pulled around just for giggles around the house, around the place there. But I never dreamed in years to come that my experience with my horse then would come all back just like a, a wall of water coming at you. And it's kind of, it, it's just, it just seems so natural, you know? It's just, it's just a nice place to be. You know, as, and, and in fact, when I'm gone, I can't be as involved as much as now as I was before. Um, I've come down with the pulmonary problems. And so I don't have the breath I used to do. But I can still, I will still be around. And when, when there are veterans here, I will be here. Because as I mentioned earlier, when, when one veteran's talking to another, it doesn't matter what the gender is, doesn't matter what anything, it all counts that if you're a veteran, the dots will connect immediately. <laughs>